Okay, great. So we're going to start today talking a little bit about the nervous system. And I'm curious if anyone has any specific questions about the nervous system or what people know. Um, and we'll kind of start dropping into it. So um, the nervous system is one of my favorite topics in conversation. Hi, Mary. Welcome. And I actually want to start just with like a little visual for you all. Can you all hear me all right? Yeah, okay. So basically, let's check out the screen. Um, so our nervous system, it's in charge of so many different things. We have our central nervous system, and that's our brain and our spine, and then we have our autonomic nervous system and that controls our parasympathetic and our sympathetic nervous system. And our parasympathetic nervous system is really turned, kicked on when we're in that rest, digest, peaceful, relaxation state. Um, and then that sympathetic nervous system is kicked on when we're under stress, when, um, you know. Fight or flight. Fight or flight, yeah. And so the nervous system, those responses, you know, it actually, can create sweating in the hand that creates a lot of physiological responses. Anxiety, shallow breathing. Yeah, all of that. So the nervous system is incredibly important. And um, in traditional medicine, or, you know, a lot of people say that it's impossible to regenerate the nervous system. But however, we've seen that when the body is alkaline and we are introducing lots of fresh fruits, the nervous system actually does repair itself. So we will talk about that in different instances. Um, but I wanna give a little quick visual for a moment um, on in, an insight into our iridology and to show what, when there's nervous system weakness, what that actually looks like in our own eyes. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus more. There's a lot of different examples here, but this one right here we can focus on and see where there's these rings happening, these stress rings. That's actually showing that there's nervous system tension um, and also adrenal weakness in the body. We can see it here on a blue eye, it also shows up. So when you have multiple nerve rings, um, we're dealing with a chronic condition, something that's been around for a long time. And even little kids can be born with um, chronic nerve rings. You know, I've seen lots of two-year-olds and newborns with these. So it's something that we inherit. It's passed down from multiple generations. And so today we're going to talk a little about, about how to address that and different symptoms that we see when we do have these rings and then also how to really start that healing process. Okay, I'll stop the share. And I'm just curious real quick, if, if anybody, as you've been doing your transformation or you've gotten more into your 10 day portion where you're cleansing, has anyone experienced feelings of anxiety or like just feeling like your nervous system is, is taxed or any of that? Because that can happen when you're detoxing. So I'm just curious if anyone has had a little bit of, or just feeling overwhelmed. Um, you can type in the chat or hop on, share a little bit. Yes, Margaret. Yes, yes, yes. Great. So what Mary's getting to is that when we're getting into deeper levels of healing, healing at that cellular level, what we're doing is we're trying to take what's happening is chronic conditions that are suppressed that we don't even know are there that, again, we can be born with or that... Um, you know, we in inherited or that was an injury along the way, those start to come to the surface. They come from that chronic state to that subacute state, from that subacute state to that acute state. And in that acute state, you're starting to feel all of those symptoms come to the surface. So even if you had anxiety in the past and you felt that you resolved it, and then maybe now you're starting to feel little bits of those anxiety symptoms coming to the surface as you're cleansing, it's eliminating those old tissue weaknesses that we were looking at and the rings of the eyes. It's eliminating those suppressed symptoms and conditions and bringing it to the surface so it can be healed. So 
that's a little bit of what's happening underneath. And especially as those adrenals are starting to reset and heal, that's really closely tied to the nervous system health. Yeah. And some things, so if you have been experiencing that, know that it's something that can pass, but it's also something that is nice to support as well. So things that really can support your nervous system during this transformation is just making sure that you're getting a lot of like dark leafy greens, vegetables, um, B6 and B12, your B vitamins really support their nervous system. So also your omega threes. Um, if you're doing like a, a really intense 10 day cleanse and you're not doing any fats, um, you can ignore this comment, but if you're feeling that little bit of, um, you know, tension in your nervous system, things like walnuts and almonds and pumpkin seeds can be something nice to just have a few here and there just to support you in this detox and cleansing and give your body those omega threes and B sixes. Um, bananas. I saw Kema, you were saying that you've actually been feeling a little bit of depression, which is normal too. When you're, especially when you're working on the gut microbiome, you can see it's really working on your hormones and you can see a lot of fluctuations in moods sometimes when you are detoxing. So, oops. You're good. Okay. <laughs> so things like bananas, um, bananas actually have tryptophan in them, which is an amino acid or protein that is converted into serotonin in the body. So bananas are something that you can incorporate to support that brain nerve connection. And um, uh, tar cherry juice is another thing that's phenomenal to support the nervous system, which we're doing. Um, our full spectrum amino acids, they actually really help to activate neurotransmitters within the brain. So you have everything that we have in this cleanse is really supporting your nervous system. And so if you're feeling a little bit of anxiety or tension or things, it's, it's just what Rita was saying that it's coming to the surface and you're moving through it. But um, there are little things that you can do. I know Rita wants to talk about some herbs that you can incorporate too, just to kind of ease that and help you get through it to the other side. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And we'll go into herbs in a minute. I want to hear from the carries over there as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you for that share. And it is so important to address this topic. And what came up for me in my deeper cleanse was a lot of emotions. And so during this 10 day deeper portion, a lot of emotions can come up. And what can be helpful to support the nervous system is having routine. And with everything happening in the world right now, um, our routines are kind of dismantled a little bit. And so I invite you to have a morning and an evening routine at least of some type of morning practice with breath work or yoga or meditation or something to incorporate the breath because that's really helpful to calm the nervous system down and just kind of get centered to and have intention to move through your day. And that's a really helpful tool. And then I'll so with evening time, you know, sleep is really important to regenerate the body. And so like shutting down screen time at a certain time so that way your eyes aren't stimulated by the light, um, you know, reading a book instead or doing something like that, but having some type of, of night routine or ritual that could be helpful um, to just keep things calm and so that you sleep better and make sure you do your cherry juice. And those things have been helpful for me. And that's what I've been noticing is I need a more of a morning routine and a night routine to keep me on track because then my day moves along better. Um, and then Carrie and I both do my abdominal massage. But if you have never had this done, you can literally go in a clockwise motion, you know, along your and your belly. And that can really help because our gut brain connection is so important. And this could just really help calm things down and just connect to your body again. And I find when I do this in the morning with my breath, and then I just set my intention, it's just a way to connect back in and um, start my day like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So um, nervous system is like such a huge topic, so we won't even be able to really tackle everything in this call, but we can talk about a few things and then I can refer you back to a resource that we have on the Mighty Network platform. Um, but like Rita explained, we have parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, but we also, it's made up of your autonomic nervous system, your central nervous system, and your enteric nervous system. So there's three sectors of your nervous system, and the enteric nervous system is really in charge of the bowels and digestion and all of that processing. So if you're experiencing like constipation, this is just a sign of adrenal weakness, of nervous system weakness. 
and that um, the adrenal glands are not properly functioning so that enteric nervous system is not being fired um, right now. And so that's like really the point of this cleanse and this regeneration is to get these systems feeling nourished and supported and without going too deep into gut health um, at all, but you may be experiencing what's called a Herxheimer reaction during this time. You guys are in the thick of your 10 day. So if you're really going deep and you're not doing fats, which don't make you feel safe and they don't feed parasites. Um, so most of us are dealing with a fungal die off or a parasite die off of some sort. And don't think like that's gross or like, oh my gosh, I don't have that. Like we all have been exposed to so much and so many chemicals and that environment in our gut biome becomes very friendly for parasites and candida and fungus. And so that environment thrives and survives off of sugar and starch and fat. So if your cravings have increased significantly, it's a good sign. It's actually a sign that they're dying and that the environment inside your gut biome no longer feels safe and those parasites are leaving your body. So I encourage that to be what keeps you going. And this will create feelings of anxiousness um, during a, like basically parasites only survive with a host and right now you're their host. And so as they are dying, you may feel like more panicked. You could have some fight or flight. You might even have like a heart palpitation response. There's a lot of things that can happen during her stomach reaction. And so, you know, it really depends on like keeping your body in a space of just understanding that you are safe and that, that in this environment is leaving and that we don't need to feed them that they will exit on their own and you're going to have a better stronger nervous system without them there because parasites actually control your nervous system they're like behind the scenes sending signals to the brain so they control your cravings they control you know like the thoughts that we think a lot of really deep dark depression coming from us they're coming from parasite family in the parasite kingdom so I really encourage you to really focus more on the mind state. Um, I love the suggestions that Rita and Mary gave, but if you know you're dealing with a parasite issue, I would stay lower on the fats enough to make you feel safe, but really stay lower on them because it's just 10 days. They're coming back, guys. So you're going to be okay. Um, but I use a couple of things. I've interlaced my hands and I set them on the top of my abdomen if I'm feeling anxious. And I'll just like sit down or lay down and I say the three words, safe, soft, and warm. And really that's just like what your body needs to disarm. Like it's all good, we're safe, soft, and warm. You know, and like your body always needs to feel like it's safe, it's supported, it's not a hard, it's not in a hard position, it's warm, you know, like we're not, we're not in famine. So really training our nervous system that even though we're going through an upheaval or a change, that we're completely supported in this, in this process and in this journey. Um, and then, you know, overall nervous system weakness, we can talk about signs and symptoms that your nervous system may be struggling. Um, so I can let one of the other ladies chat about that if you want, but one of the ones that I've dealt with several times in the past and stress is a big trigger is tinnitus. It's ringing of the ears. Um, that's a big sign of nervous system weakness. Um, you can have like just shakiness or feeling random anxiety. So those are a few, um, and you can have nervous legs, restless leg syndrome, RLS at night, like feeling like you need to fidget or move. Um, elevated blood cholesterol is a sign of nervous system weakness. So things that we don't even think about uh, that are related to the adrenal gland. So as you can see, we can get really deep into this topic. So I don't want to overwhelm you, so I'll pause there, and I'll let... Um, I see a question, so I can address oh, yeah. that. Um, the question is, as we introduce foods again, should we notice energy increased? I felt a little energy this cleanse, or I felt very little energy this cleanse, especially in the afternoon. I'm eating almost all fruit for 20 days on day six of only fruit, and I didn't start my Purium products till a week ago. Um, that's a great question, and you'll have different moments of feeling like really tired and, and really energetic. I remember when I was in my deeper portion, my body's just into more healing, so it's really important to rest more. And there's an art to this, so you can like slow it down or speed it up depending on what your goals are and where you're at. But a lot of times when our body's breaking up all the acid with all or breaking up all the acids with the fruit, we can get more tired as it's starting to like move that waste out. And then once we like push through that, we 
have more energy and it's like, wow, I can survive off way less now. Um, so it's, it's depending on where you are in your journey and what your goals are, but you'll have moments of feeling more energy and, and not, and so just making sure that you're eating enough, that you're not starving, make sure you're hydrated enough. Um, I hope that answers your question. And if not, you can mm -hmm. comment. Yeah. And like you, I mean, if you really think about it, like fruit is such an astringent cleanser, you're breaking up so much fat soluble toxic waste and so much acid and mucus that's been stored in the tissues for years. Like I would not expect to feel good actually. Like if you feel fine, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would say like, expect, like invite those feelings in like, okay, great. This is working. Like mm -hmm. mucus is leaving. Your body is telling you something. It's telling you to lay down. <laughs> So it's like yeah. rest more, let your be easier on yourself. Don't mm -hmm. go for that run, take a walk in the fresh air, sit on the grass, take a nap, drink some tea. Um, I'm preaching to the choir because I need to do all these things, <laughs> but, but these are what works. Like your body really does need more rest while you're detoxing waste out. Yeah. And this is a common question about being cold when adding in all these fruits, especially when the summer isn't here in full force. And I felt that same way when I first started, but it's really important to, you know, dress, wear enough clothes, but have warming things like have ginger tea. Um, I love mixing ginger watermelon juice, but you could do make ginger tea with fresh ginger root. Turmeric is a warming herb. So adding in more warming herbs, more warming herbal teas is really helpful, especially if you're trying to go more on the fruit side of things because it's cleansing and cooling. And um, But adding in ginger and adding in warming things like that and warm, you can like warm water with lemon, um, just warming things up. You can even warm your fruit up. I, I think I talked about this in another video, but you can take frozen cherries out of the freezer and literally just warm them up on the stove. And that can be helpful as well. And also the reason for, you know, cold hands and feet, if you deal with that regularly is thyroid. Mm -hmm. And so during any sort of detox, every organ and every gland that you have is working harder. And so your thyroid starts to work harder as it's getting rid of metabolic waste. And so a lot of times what will take the hit is our circulation because our body's working on the waste leaving and it's not really as much working on the circulation to hands and feet. So just wear warming socks, drink warming things, keep moving your body, moving your lymph, hot and cold showers, Epsom salt baths, um, stimulating essential oils, like all of those things are really helpful. And then this will pass. As soon as you're out of that deep detox, your thyroid's going to go back into regulating your circulation and your metabolism properly. Yeah, something you can do, what I've done in a detox before, is even if you get cayenne pepper, not like the 70,000 IU or whatever, but a, a mild grade, you can actually take cayenne pepper and rub it on your hands and your feet and even put it on your feet and put warm socks on at night just to help stimulate that. And cayenne pepper and turmeric and ginger, these things are also really supportive for the nervous system too. So something I wanted to tap in on about what Carrie said is the parasites, they can actually like tap into our vagus nerve, which is our biggest connection to our gut and our brain. And when this happens, we're feeling their emotions. So if the parasites are dying off, of course they're feeling anxious and scared and, and that's all translating to us. So again, the turmeric and um, ginger and cayenne pepper won't only help kill those off, but they'll help to just like stimulate that nervous system to a point where it's, it's um, recirculating good energy throughout the body. So I just wanted to add that in too. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's multiple layers, multiple factors. And if there is an underlying adrenal weakness, that is always a precursor to those nerve rings or a nervous system weakness. And so again, if that's like re-strengthening, those weaknesses are going to show up. Same with the thyroid. If there's already a pre-genetic inherited weakness there on a cleanse, you might feel more of the symptoms of of what it means to have a weakened thyroid. And the thyroid is in charge of our sweating and it is in charge of um, our, our hot and cold and our temperature regulation. So just know that you might have a few days of those kinds of detox, detox symptoms that are related to thyroid and just showing that, okay, sweet, we're probably getting into that organ. This is awesome, into this gland. Um, and I just want to chat a little bit, like right now I'm doing my cherry juice. I actually do it in the day and the evening and I'm doing it with the American ginseng 
The American ginseng is amazing for nervous system health and adrenal health. Um, it helps to help to increase our neuroproduction or neurotransmitter production, which is really important because that's our communication highway to everything. So even as Carrie was saying about if you're not having bowel movements, how that can be actually an adrenal weakness and that we're just not getting that communication between the nerves and the organs. So nervous system, adrenal health, it is basically the communication to every organ, gland, tissue, cell in the body from a hormonal level to a chemical level to um, a physical processes. It's just really the communication highway for everything to happen. So that's where I really love doing that American ginseng with the cherry. Anything red is actually amazing for adrenal health. Anything yellow is amazing for nervous system health. It's that calming, relaxing. And so other symptoms, once they get into a chronic state of like nervous system weakness, we start to see Alzheimer's, poor memory, short term or long term. We start to see, you know, Parkinson's possibly. That's like nervous system slash adrenal weakness slash pituitary. So it's the combination of all these different things that we start to see. Um, these symptoms arrive over time, but our point is that we don't have to get to that point. We can start cleaning up now and never have to deal with um, any of those kinds of things you know, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or you name it. Um, another one is I want to talk about the medulla a little bit. That's the back of your brain. And so this is an area that we eventually start getting into as we detox. And it's a really amazing thing once you do. So if you ever have any pain back there, if you can just do a cold ice pack, it actually helps to cool and alkalize and speed up that detoxification process back there. Um, and what happens is like, I don't know how many people have had their tonsils removed. I know Mary has, and it was because she used to eat a ton of cheese, a ton of dairy. It was pretty much what she lived off as a kid. Um, and so her tonsils got swollen because it couldn't handle that level of mucus production in the body. So she got them removed. And then it wasn't until, until she got a little bit older and actually started eliminating dairy from her life that all of her other symptoms went away as well. But once we get those tonsils removed, they're actually the lymphatic, the lymph nodes where all that lymphatic waste in the brain goes. So uh, the brain eliminates a lot of its lymphatic waste through those tonsils uh, and it just dumps a lot of its waste there. So if we don't have those it, we have to be able to detox that lymph in other ways. And so what, what that can look like is just more lymphatic congestion. That can look like more of those symptoms of memory loss. And, and when that lymph gets congested up in the brain, we do have more of the um, dandruff and such what we were talking about, but it also lowers the circulation of the brain itself. So again, kind of just going back to the herbs that we have, there's a lot of endocrine supportive, nervous system supportive, and adrenal supportive herbs, like in your love meal, um, the Be Energetic. And what those are helping to do is, again, just increase that neurotransmitter production, um, increase steroid production, which lowers inflammation in the body. So that's really crucial and key is the nervous system or the adrenals rather are really in charge of fighting that inflammation in the body. Um, and the nervous system really heals via alkalinity. So hence why we're going on this alkaline transformation together and incorporating so many fruits and veggies. The way the nervous system heals is A, alkalinity and B, fruits. So um, the really unique thing is that fruits have basically an energy measurement and angstroms of about eight to 14,000. Whereas, you know, cooked veggies are at about 4,000. And when you're working with nervous system, you need high energy to heal and repair the nervous system. So that's where those fruits really come in and do that reparative work um, in the nervous system and in the adrenal glands. So if anybody wants to speak more to those. Can I answer a quick in there? You said I had a bad greasy taste in my mouth. And yes, that is really common in detox. Sometimes you'll get sulfur burps or sometimes when people are detoxing heavy metals, they'll taste like copper in their mouth 
or you might be dreaming at night of pizza or like <laughs> tasting cheese. Like these things are all very common and it's because it's coming out of the body. And it's actually a good sign that you're, you're feeling you're that you're tasting that because it means it's deep within the tissues and you're getting to that place where it's starting to come out. So don't be afraid of that and um, know that it, this too shall pass, but it's just showing you a different level of toxicity that might be present um, deep within the cells. And do you wanna add anything on that or? No, it's good. Okay, cool. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, it's good. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. As someone else said, they had a question about their skin, hands being dry. Um, so when I first started, I noticed I used to get cracked, dry hands and cracked heels. And as I transformed and hydrated from the inside out and moved this waste out, I no longer have that problem. And so this is this just could be a stage as after as you do this transformation and continue with adding more hydration in, that will shift. Um, so I encourage you to keep going until you don't see that because that's just a sign that there's dehydration happening in the body. And we really want to hydrate a syringe cleanse, get the acid waste out because acids, too many acids that are congested and stuck in the body cause dehydration. Mm -hmm. And so we want to get that out. And so that's the whole point of wanting to add in more hydrating, high water rich foods to move that out and then hydrate at a cellular level. And you're experiencing the dryness right now because your kidneys aren't fully functioning, filtering all the way. Laura, I can say that because we're working together. Um, and so your body use it, utilizes your skin as your third kidney. So basically your body is removing acid waste and pushing it through the skin, which is drying your skin out a little bit right now. So people might think like, oh gosh, this is making me worse. It's not, it's waste leaving your body. It's drying you out temporarily. So really be on top of dry brushing in daily showers. Like I liked when I'm detoxing, don't be washing your hair constantly, but just get in quick rinse. You know, it's like takes 30, 45 seconds. Turn the water as hot as you can, as cold as you can, as hot as you can, and then hop out. Um, but really your body is really purging a lot of waste through your skin right now. And that's what it's going to utilize because it is your largest organ, eliminative organ on your body, especially when your kidneys aren't filtering waste through the urine properly. Let's see what else we got. Mm. She has hard water. Hmm? She has hard water. That's still okay. Can she get a water filter on her shower? Can you get a water filter on your shower? Or water softener. Water softener could be helpful. That's a good point, actually. To what kind of water? Um, water softeners can be helpful for that as well. Yeah, ask your landlord. Um, yeah, that and then continue with the process of what Carrie was saying and getting those kidneys opened up and hydrating in that level. But yeah, it would be a good thing to check into if the water's hard like that for sure. Mm -hmm. And making sure that no one is drinking tap water, you know, like that is a big thing. Tap water is filled with glyphosate and metals and lead and just all sorts of things that we don't really think of because we're like, oh, we have clean water, but we don't really have clean water. So really, if you can get to a spring, Carrie goes to a spring here. Yeah. Is it still open? Frederick Miller Spring, you can get fresh spring water. It continuously runs all year round. Um, I also just got a distiller, so I distill my own water too. And that's another option to, and then you can, you don't have to go anywhere. You can just distill the water that you get and that purifies it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so spring spring water or distilled water is great. Um, any, I don't know, if I, I mean, don't, I kind of stay away from the filters even because you can't really filter it like to say it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not experienced with filters. I don't know if Rita or Mary Beth have experience in that. Spring water. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's my solution too. <laughs> we also harvest living spring water and there is a major difference between living water that's flown through nature and through the rocks and through the roots and everything compared to like city water or even just like distilled water and all of it. But do the best you can with wherever you're at, you know, like that's all that we can do. Um, the hard, the hard water is, is definitely hard on the kidneys. Um, it's a lot of minerals to break down and that does get stuck in the body. So 
could be part of the dry skin for sure. Mm -hmm. Extra, yeah. the extra pressure on the kidneys. Yeah. Um, let's see, we're getting a lot of questions in. Someone asked, are there certain foods that are help with the nervous system and the digestion? And, and you, um, Sophie, you said you haven't gotten your products yet. So the amino acids are going to be really key to that because they do help synthesize neurotransmitters. So that helps with anxiety and different tension. So as soon as you get your project or products, make sure to get on the amino acids. And again, like they were, everybody's been saying the fruits and the berries, your deep red foods, um, the tart cherry, pomegranate, these things will be really helpful with, um, for your anxiety and different things. Mm -hmm. And just know, again, like we've been saying, your anxiety might get worse for three days and then it will get better. And again, it's just bringing this condition of like adrenal weakness to the surface so it can be healed. So um, yes, the fruits will help to restore that. The aminos, as Mary said, are so important. And then let's see, Terry, you had a question about um, seedless watermelons and grapes. Are they GMO? So watermelon should have seeds and so should All grapes. Fruit should All have fruit seeds. should have seeds. So if it doesn't have seeds, then it is modified. Um, so, and it, you know, genetically, meaning they've bred it and crossbred it in all these different ways. And the seeds are so important um, for our health and well being. And if they don't have seeds, then those fruits aren't reproducing. So that also impacts our reproductive health. So what we're putting in is very important. I would it's it's hard to find watermelon with seeds and grapes with seeds. Like when I find it, I'm just like, whoa, yes, amazing. Even bananas should have seeds. Even I don't bananas know if should you've have seeds. Been to the tropics, but they actually have little black seeds. You don't see that in any of our bananas anymore. So yeah, and we're kind of just breeding and crossbreeding, creating like these sterile fruits. <laughs> it's sad. But however, people are still finding a lot of healing benefits on doing grapes, even if they can't find the seeded ones. Um, same with the watermelons. They're still finding a lot of healing, a lot of you know, restoration of your electrolytes, and um, they're just good on so many levels. But do your best. Visit you know, your local farmers. Um, find connections within the community and really try and get stuff, fruit that has seeds. Yeah, seedless is everywhere. Know, you kind of have to connect with your local farmer. So this is like a grassroots movement back to the earth, back to our farmers, because they're the ones that are really saving this earth. And if you do find seeded grapes or watermelons, save those seeds and plant them. Mm -hmm. And let us know where. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, okay, how about a get regular type T with higher amounts of cinnia leaf in it? Does that interrupt this process or aid it? So the regular, getting regular, having bowel movements, again, it's a deeper thing that's happening. It could be, you know, parasites involved in there, definitely adrenal weakness involved in there usually. So if we can address that root cause and if we can start getting hydrated, getting more fruits in there, getting more watermelons, all of that to hydrate the bowels and get things moving. Um, I mean, my story, I, I had to heal my spine from, I broke it off in five places and broke it in eight places total. And because of that, I had damaged um, the nervous system so deeply that I could not have bowel movements. And it wasn't until that I, and I was doing all these different kinds of herbs that help you to have bowel movements, nothing. It wasn't until I repaired my adrenals that I was able to have normal bowel movements. So yes, if you're like really backed up and you're needing extra support, that super cleanser is there to help you move more. I also really like marshmallow tea, fennel. Fennel's great. Fennel's amazing. You can use psyllium husk if you're really backed up. Um, yeah, I do minimum of that. And someone's asking about herbs and teas for the nervous system. Kava is really, really good for the nervous system. Valerian, you can make these into different teas um, if you're just needing a little more support in this process as you're moving through it. Uh, anything you ladies want to add, Carrie's, in yeah. terms of that? Yeah. Add more herbs. So ashwagandha is a really amazing adaptogenic herb um, that could be, it kind of adapts to where your body stresses are, where you need the most um, help. And so 
ashwagandha is a safe one to use across the board and that's an easy one to find at, at a lot of places. And then um, also another way to check the adrenal glands is checking your blood pressure on both arms. So our adrenal glands sit on top of our kidneys and we have you know one on each side. And so our blood pressure can be different on both. And our top number, our systolic, represents our adrenal glands and the bottom, the diastolic represents the kidneys. And so ideally we want to see it 120 over 60. That's like textbook perfect blood pressure. So if it's too low, and that was my problem when I first started is I was always told that my blood pressure was normal, um, even though it wasn't, it was actually on the lower side. And so mine was in like the not, low 90s. And, um, and that's adrenal health. That, that no signs are and what can be helpful for someone that has low blood pressure is the root. And it, but if somebody has high blood pressure, you wouldn't want to take that. So another thing too to address is to know your blood pressure and if anyone's on blood pressure medication, to make sure you're monitoring that throughout a cleanse because it could naturally go lower and you wouldn't want to take it to make it lower if it's naturally going down. And so, you know, talking with your doctor on that. But you wouldn't want to take licorice root if it's on the higher end. So if it's below 120 over 60, you know, then if it's way below 120 over 60, then licorice root could be really helpful to help bring it up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like Carrie said, if you have high blood pressure, you don't want to take any licorice root at all because um, it's just elevate. So that, and then I, I mean, we don't want to give you guys too many things. You could have like a million supplements in your cabinet if you wanted to. But if you're, I mean, really tap in with one of us, if you're really stuck, like if you are, have not moved your bowels at all, then you have a deeper issue. And what you have is not only an enteric nervous system and adrenal nervous system weakness happening, but you also have probably like some really old hardened stool. And um, what I recommend for that, and a lot of times what can happen is if you start experiencing a lot of gas when you go raw, it's a sign that you have old hardened stool that's stuck and the fruits and vegetables are fermenting on top of that stool. And so you actually want to oxygenate the bowels as much as possible. And I would actually cease fruits and vegetables temporarily. This is the only time you'll ever hear me say this, okay? <laughs> um, but cease fruits and vegetables temporarily. And this is only if you're like really stuck. Like if you are pooping once a day, you're fine. But if it is not moving, it's been several days, I would get a magnesium oxide supplement. That's all organic. That's, you know, something that's good. Basically, it's going to come in and blow up. Like it's going to oxygenate the entire environment so that if you are dealing with... Um, this will be in the detox symptoms and support. There's a video there, but um, if you are dealing with like a parasite die off or a Herxheimer die off, there's actually, um, these buggers are brilliant and they release a gas that locks up your bowels. Um, and so you could be experiencing this. And so this gas is like, the, it's like the, how they prevent themselves from dying off. And it's part of the Bartonella virus and, um, or the parasite, I should say, but you basically could be just chronically bound because of that. And it generally lasts no more than three days. So something like an organic magnesium oxide that's gonna come in and oxygenate the environment and just keep remembering this. Alkalinity and oxygen starves all parasites, viruses, antigens, pathogens, and disease. So you, when you come in and you oxygenate that, they vacate and now your fruits and veggies can alkalize, come through, move, and rebuild and regenerate the bowels. So reach out to one of us if you think you might be experiencing that, and we can send you a link for like a manageably affordable and organic source to get that from. Um, and that's only, I only pull that out like rarely, like sometimes like fruits and vegetables usually do the trick, mm -hmm. but if you're experiencing a lot of bloating, a lot of gas, and no movements, come chat. Anybody else? Let's see what we got here. What do you mean? I think there was a question earlier that wasn't addressed. Um, or was this one? Um, so we can address and Rita can address this too. Somebody's talking about um, taking a lot of vitamins and supplements. It really depends. Like on this program and you know, Mary Beth will say this a lot too, we're on a really high vitamin and mineral rich program. We really are, we are lacking for nothing. 
on this. So your body is really supported and in the most organic possible way. And what you realize is like, you know, like we discussed last week, like how vitamin C can only be processed, you know, in conjunction with some iron and vice versa. It's the same, like basically our body can't recognize isolates. So what that means is if you have isolated chemistry, meaning like you're taking an over-the-counter vitamin C, vitamin D, iron, it's been made in a lab somewhere. And it is not a natural process. Your body actually has an extremely difficult time recognizing what it is. And it stresses out the liver even further. And a lot of those coatings can actually strip our gut biome. Like they actually are not very beneficial to have isolated chemistry vitamins. So that's why we focus on getting things from whole food sources in their complete form where they can be digested and absorbed and utilized properly. So the vitamin company is like a multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar company and most people are just actually adding more stress to their liver and their system overall and just peeing it all out like you notice you're peeing out weird colors that's not normal so the only time that should happen is if you're eating so much dragon fruit like Rita and I in Bali that your pee turns magenta <laughs> that happened to us I was like anybody else have magenta pee <laughs> we had like 10 dragon fruits a day in Bali it was amazing um, but yeah, you shouldn't have a discoloration to your urine. It should never be neon or fluorescent and um, isolated chemistry is not recommended. So really what you're looking at whenever you're supplementing something, it's put, it's like you're putting a bandaid on. The underlying problem, if you are depleted in minerals, is the nervous system, is the adrenal glands. So they are not properly converting minerals. So just adding and adding and adding and adding more in, especially from an isolate source is actually just going to wear you out. It's why like a lot of people with chronically low iron will be like, I'm taking like 10,000 milligrams a day and my iron barely goes up. And that's because they're not absorbing it anyways, because the adrenal gland is the reason they have low iron. So really getting to the root cause is like the work that we do. And this is the beginning of that. Yeah. This is the beginning of alkalizing your body. If you know that you have deeper issues and more chronic issues, you know, reach out to whoever brought you here and we'll hold your hand and help you through things that are going to actually regenerate the organ and get rid of the problem. And you won't have to take vitamins for the rest of your life. Yeah. This is like a gateway to true like regeneration. It can take longer than, I mean, a lot of things can happen in 30 days, but true regeneration of like deeper things can take a little bit of time, like a three to six months or more, depending on how, what the stage is in. Um, there's another question, are coffee enemas okay? And I'm assuming that everyone will agree with me to not do coffee enemas because it's more of a stimulant and you don't want to rely on that stimulant. So just as we're avoiding ingesting coffee, drinking it, we don't want to bring it in that way either. If, if you feel you need to do an enema, do it with warm water or tea or a lemon juice even um, to help clean that out. And there is another, someone has severe pain and would this help them? Totally detoxing will help them. If someone's having severe nerve pain, uh, we wanna get the toxins of waste out. We wanna remove what's causing that nerve pain in, from the first place. And so a cleanse would for sure help them on so many levels. A lot of our pain is just literally inflammation and the inflammation is putting pressure on the nerves and that's it. It's like that simple. Like if you have chronic sciatica down the back of your leg and you do every stretch in the world, keep stretching. It's not yeah. going to go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's your kidneys. Yeah. So, you know, the nerves run underneath the kidney and when your kidneys are inflamed, you're going to have sciatica. So that means you need to get the protein out. You need to start flushing the kidneys with astringent red fruits and really just bringing that inflammation down and then the sciatica goes away. Um, people that have like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your fingers, Raynaud's, mm -hmm. that's severe inflammation of the, the lymphatic system that causes like the numbness and the whiteness in the hands. Um, those, all those things go away really, really, really quickly when you get the inflammation out. Like people are like, I've dealt with this for 10 years and it's gone in 45 days and they're shocked. And that's because the body just, when you get rid of the acids, you get rid of the inflammation, you get rid of the problems. It's, yeah. it's like, even though we're talking about a lot of these really deep complex things and it sounds like we know a lot, which we do, it's really quite simple at the end of the day. Yeah. I used to have sciatica, so I can speak on that um, for sure. That's like gone completely now. Or I was like, I couldn't walk when I was 19 in school for massage. 
I, like I, my legs totally gave out on me and I had severe sciatica and that hasn't happened to me since I transitioned my diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Do we have any more questions in there? Are Rita, dehydrated? Rita, you're welcome to pop in if you got anything. Are dehydrated dates or dehydrated fruits okay? Frozen fruits and veggies as well. Um, during the that. during the deeper 10 days, I would try to stick with more fresh. You could do frozen like smoothies and stuff too, I think is good. Um, but I would stay away from like dehydrated stuff during the 10 day deeper portion if you're wanting to cleanse deep, but you can. I don't do dehydrated fruits ever. That's me. Um, and here's why. Because they lack their water content. And they're a lot harder on the gut to brown. And they're more readily available to create fermentation process in your body. So I really avoid dried fruits. Like if, if you, a freeze dried fruit is actually much easier than a dried dried fruit. Like when, when it looks like chewing leather, you're probably not going to break it down very well. Um, and then, you know, that goes into like, if you're eating dried fruits right after a meal, then that's going to create more fermentation. It can build fungus. So I personally don't eat dried fruits, especially if you know, you've had a lot of antibiotics in your life. You've had a lot of exposure to maybe well water or non-organic foods. You have sulfur in your system and they will just make friends. So, um, I personally avoid dried fruits. Even when I eat dates, I actually boil them. And or you, make you them can softer. soak them too. So, you, so Terry is saying, our figs dry fruit? You can get figs dry or fresh. Mm -hmm. And if you get them dry, soak them. And then they're easier to digest. Same with dates. You can soak them and then they're easier to break down. Um, would lymphatic massage be helpful? Yes. Um, there's actually neural lymphatic points along your spine and you can go on a clockwise motion along, like you can have your partner, a friend do this, um, do clockwise motions up and down your spine. And that's really great for opening up that lymphatic channel. Rita, you got anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I would just say um, lymphatic massage helps a ton for moving the lymphatic system, but if your kidneys aren't filtering, then you're just moving it, pushing it. So the combination of lymphatic massage and kidney filtration through your fruits and your herbs are the key there. And it is common to, when you're detoxing, you might have a pain in your shoulder and then three days later you feel it down in your knee. And then the next few days you feel it in a different place. And again, that's just because the acids are just moving around in the body. And the idea is, is we don't want to stir up all this stuff and then just have it move to different places and settle in different places. We want to get it out. So the real fo focus should be on the bowels, the kidneys and the adrenals to really be getting this stuff out rather than just moving it around the body. Mm -hmm. And back to a little bit on the coffee enema, just wanted to touch deeper on that because people bring that up all the time. I personally would never recommend a coffee enema for the same reasons that Carrie said. It's just really stimulating, but it also is very harsh on the adrenals. So it'll like at first have this initial hit where you might have some elimination, but what it's doing is it's actually weakening those adrenals more, weakening those glands more, weakening those tissues more. So then you're just, again, it's, it's not sustainable. It's in, in fact, over time, it will make the problem worse. So. And it can also strip the body of a lot of minerals because of the coffee. And so if you're trying, if in this cleanse, we're no, you know, we're really mineralizing, we're really nourishing ourselves. So doing a coffee enema would kind of do the opposite. And we don't want to, put any extra stress on our organs that they're already under because when you are detoxing, like Carrie said, your organs are on an amplified stress because they're working harder. So we don't want to do anything that's going to make the organs even work harder and more stressed. And so that's why we suggest eliminating any of the stimulants, even like cacao and stuff. If you, and especially if you're having nervous system um, issues and you were to do a coffee en enema, you might really see those be amplified. So we just want to ease, ease the, the situation. Um, nursing and detox mare. I'm just going to answer that pain under your right rib is your liver um, big time. So everybody should be able to lay down or sit down right now and take your hands and go underneath your bottom right rib and push super duper hard. Like you should be able to like and have no pain. That's when your liver's in good condition. If it is tender, 
it needs some flushing. <laughs> so really like, and that tenderness will go away. It's probably working harder right now. I would actually expect tenderness in your rib. The liver is the project manager. So it's like your kidneys are the waste remover, your lymph are the, the sewer system, your liver is the project manager. So it's like managing all of the waste and releasing fat soluble toxic waste and everything that comes in goes through the liver and everything that goes out goes through the liver. But the liver is a really cool organ that can constantly regenerate itself. So don't stress, but just clean and just know that like you can keep checking in. If you can really jab in there and feel nothing, then you're in good shape. Those are like some of the signs that your liver is doing better. It's managing better. The toxins are leaving. The inflammation's going down. And then there was another question on what? We don't have anything that's not on the grocery list like grains. Yeah, grains. Mm-mm. <laughs> so, I'm gonna say. so I mean spread it is always better like if you but really just kind of come into the place and ask yourself do I need this and um the one thing that we're going to touch on since this is a nervous system talk is the desire to eat starch and crap is because it is actually so overwhelming to our digestive system that it actually shuts our CNS down, our central nervous system, which is our ability to feel emotion. So that's why we crave junk when we're sad or depressed. And then all of a sudden you're like eating a bag of potato chips, staring at the TV and you feel totally numb for that time. And then the next day the depression sets in from the response from that. But your body is actually, you're, you're physically detoxing and you're emotionally detoxing simultaneously. It's impossible not to be doing both. So you're probably having some emotions come up. You might be feeling sad and be like, why am I sad right now? Just let it out. It's better out than in, but really avoiding grains. Grains are highly inflammatory. You know, during this time, you don't want to be eating rice for sure. Um, I, I really just, during the 10 day, it's no cooked foods, period. So, and the reason for that is so that the bowels can properly clean out parasitic waste, fungal waste, keep moving the bowels, letting peristalsis happen. Grains also inhibit that peristalsis because they get so sticky um, and you notice how full and dense you feel after you eat them. So just kind of like listen to those cues in the body and then ask yourself really like, do I need this or do I want this, right? How is my body actually feeling? Um, so yeah, those are my tips on, on grains. I've been grain free for a really long time. And I can tell you, I do not miss it at all. Like every time, like someone makes like some amazing thing and it's like even quinoa, like doesn't do anything for me anymore. Like I'll buy it and I'm like, meh. You know, once you really like heal the nervous system, you stop craving starch. So what you're craving is stimulation to the nervous system. Um, and when your nervous system is weak, you'll crave more of the stimulating foods because it's a temporary quick, quick fix that actually triggers your body into producing corticosteroid. So when we are eating complex starches and we're eating grains, we're actually triggering our body into a fight or flight state. So even though you're not being chased by a lion, your body thinks you're being chased by a lion, but it's really just rice and so it's like not worth it right so it's like oh that's just rice but your body doesn't know the difference so really just kind of pay attention to those things like am I craving a lot of salt am I craving a lot of starch um, those are all nervous system signs that the adrenals are really really struggling and the best way that we can actually heal them is through fruits and through consistent eating. So making your body not feel too hungry. Like don't let yourself go too long without food. This isn't a diet. This is switching what you're eating in the abundance that you need to help regeneration and healing. I can touch on that too. Um, another thing that can be helpful is yeah. with the nervous system and adrenal stuff, you can crave more salty things. So celery juice can be really helpful if you feel like you want more like I had a hard time letting go of chips and salsa. So celery juice was really helpful for that. And then I saw another question about um, someone that said they were nursing and they don't want to detox too much. What would yeah. be a subtle, subtle way to do this? So you for sure don't want to take the cleanse R. Um, during the 10 day deeper portion, you could do you know, raw fruits yeah, and vegetables. Surgery. And if you feel you need more, then have like sweet potatoes and squashes and stuff like that. You definitely don't want to, you know, you want to make sure you're nourished during this time. And Mary, can speak on that more since she is a nursing mama right now. Um, so yeah. And just so you know, um, I'm going to disappear in two minutes because I have to teach a yoga class, but you guys are all good. Okay. Very Love you. Love you all. In regards to the nursing, um, again, we don't want to be cleansing deep when we're nursing. You can totally 
um, have a fruit and veggie diet or in, when you're nursing. But again, like if you need to add in a little bit more avocado or what I was talking about in the beginning, some bananas or almonds or walnuts for the nursing process, for the calories and for the omegas for your baby's brain and all that good stuff, definitely do that. Don't take it to the point where you ever feel like you're starving yourself if you're nursing or pregnant. Um, but you can totally be subsistent. Subs subsistent sustained. <laughs> sustained on a fruit and veggie diet just really um look at your uh, your energy levels and you may want to add in like an extra five aminos a day to make sure that you're getting ample um protein for the baby and all that so sweet potatoes are great again you can do some sprouted grains if you're nursing you know just just remember to listen to your body and we're all at different phases and so we have to remember that um chlorophyll is another really great thing that you can do to um, it basically captures heavy metals and, and toxins and helps to eliminate them through the kidneys and the bowels versus the milk so high chlorophyll foods which is what we're doing you know our shake has tons of chlorophyll in it so if you're nursing you can even amp that up with like the kamut blend or even get a chlorophyll a, a liquid chlorophyll to get more chlorophyll in there as well um, and yeah I actually have to run too, everybody, but thank you. These girls might continue on and <laughs> I'll see you next week. Thanks, Mary. Awesome. So I hope everyone gained a little bit of a deeper insight into our nervous system and how that corresponds to our adrenal, adrenal health stuck. <laughs> and how that corresponds to our lymphatic system health, um, all of it. And so takeaways, if you have one takeaway for me, like what was most helpful for healing my own nervous system um, was the high fruits. The high fruits, spending time in nature, um, getting that relaxation in, really sp spending time where that parasympathetic nervous system is active, meaning the rest and digest. So restorative yoga, deep breathing, long walks, time in nature will almost immediately put you in that relaxation state. Um, anything that's supportive of your adrenals, whether that's licorice tea or, you know, the other herbs that are like in the love meal. So just nourishing ourselves deeply and having that high fruit and high herb concentration is, is how I've regenerated my nervous system. Anything else, Carrie? Um, yeah, no, I think that is being out in nature is huge. So the more you can get out in different environments, especially in like parks where there's not a lot of cars and out where the, the air is a little cleaner and do some deep breathing is really helpful. Um, I see someone said um, rice, they thought rice was better than grains with gluten. And so the problem with certain grains and you is the glyphosate issue so it's a lot of times it's the glyphosate that people are reacting to and not necessarily just the gluten so um, just being mindful of another reason to buy organic and know where the grains are coming from but really just taking this time to eat less foods that are less complex to digest and break down and that's the whole point of like cleansing is to give the body the conditions to let go of what it's not serving and then it can use that energy to heal and re rebuild and repair so there's so many different levels you can take this. So depending on what your goals are is how fast or slow. So if you want to go faster, you can speed it up with more fruits. If you want to slow it down, have more vegetables. You want to slow it down further, have cooked food. So you can kind of play around with what your goals are. And, um, and yeah, so let's see if there's other questions. Um, is Dandy Blend okay? Yeah, if you're trying to have a substitute for coffee, I would definitely do dandy, dandy blend versus the coffee for sure. Awesome. Oh, sorry. I just had a call come in too. I also have to hop off here. Yeah, and we can close it out. Um, what's the real quick, the love meal is uh, another product from Perium that's a lot of sprouted plant proteins and that actually is really good mixed with the power shake so if you're wanting to continue um, and it has a lot of adaptogenic herbs in it and so it's just more of a meal replacement uh, moving forward so if you're wanting to incorporate that Rita you can touch on that and then we can close it out yeah perfect yeah the love meal is kind of like a meal replacement exactly it's sprouted um, very nutritive 
has like your kelps in there for remineralization. Everything in it is like the top foods for your adrenals and your nervous system. So I really like to help people incorporate that, especially if they're working on some deeper endocrine healing, deeper adrenal healing. Um, it will help you move through some of like the anxiety and different things like that. So basically very just mineral rich and those, you know, whole plants, whole foods that are um, good for adrenal health. So yeah, thank you all. Thanks for diving in and please let us know what questions you have for next week and we'll see you next week. Love you all. Thank you, Carrie.